well, part two, so let's not waste any time and let's jump straight in. So, this is all out of place. We need to start organizing this. Um, so, what we're going to do is put our head at the top. Then our, sorry, our head above the body. Then our waist. And that looks pretty good. So now, we need to start hierarchying this. That makes sense to you. Um, what you want to do is create some groups. I'm going to do this purely using drawing objects so we don't use pegs. Um, let's just create a blank drawing object. So no, I'm not going to be daft. Let's add a new peg. We're going to add our body to this peg. We're going to call this upper body. And we're going to put our head above this body in the peg. And then we're going to create another peg. Put it out. We're going to name this lower body. Could you guess that? Gonna put our waist in the lower body, and then right leg connected to the waist, right leg upper connected to the waist, and the right leg lower goes into the upper. Is this making sense? So the right leg upper goes into the waist, the right leg lower goes into the upper. The left we want the left arm upper goes into the body the left arm lower goes into the lower I'll select them to bring them to the top, put them into the body like that okay so now we've got this all arranged and this means, let's grab our transform tool. If we grab this upper body because of the hierarchy, because this left lower arm is part of it, when we rotate this, the other part moves, but we can see a problem, and that is that it's rotating around the wrong point. So line it up well. And if you were to move this, this is the pivot point. If you were to move it up there, sorry, I think we want the pivot there. We want it about there, something like that. Um, then it works, but when you click off and then click back on, the pivot point has moved itself. So what you have to do is move the pivot using the rotate tool, and that's this button down here. So when we put that back up, then when we grab the transform tool, it will always stay there. And that's looking cool. Um, what you need to do is go through and set the rotation points for all the different objects. I'm going to do these quickly. Right arm upper, right arm lower. It's going to go there, obviously. Right hand. Let's guess. The head. I'm going to pivot around that neck point. The upper body. It's going to pivot around there. The lower body. And pivot around there. Now you don't want to be moving the body, even though the body has this hierarchy. What you want to be moving is the upper body, because if you move, if you start messing around with the body, the head's not going to move, and that is a major issue. So legs, and the rotate tool, put it, and put it there. Left leg lower. I'm going to put it to the front of it, the shin, the left leg lower, and now what you really want to be doing is using pegs the whole way down, and then for instance you have a body peg, you have a left arm peg, you have a left arm lower peg, and you want to be putting these drawing elements inside of it, that is really what you want to be doing. Um, now when we grab our transform tool, then I mean, obviously, there's some major problems here. What you want to do is uh, 
I center the rotation like that, it should work better. But obviously there are still some problems. Now this is why we have the circular bit, because left leg upper, let's grab our paint tool. If we paint over some of that, and then grab our black tool. Now when we have a look, transform. As you can see, it can move that far, and it still looks. And the idea is that you create the round bit, so it's round enough to make it look like. So it's round enough to make it look like that you've drawn every single frame. Is that making sense? I hope so. Now these arms obviously are harder because they're skin, but they should be looking good how they are. Um, thanks to zoom in. Um, but you want to make sure that them curves are curvy. I'm not going to go into detail, but the idea is that you want to make them as rounded as possible. That looks pretty good. I'm liking that. Right. Yeah, and then we've rigged this up. So if we add another peg, call this peg Person Jefferson. That's what I'm going to call him. Check them arrows so that it collapses it. Put that into Person Jefferson. So now we've got a peg for the whole character. And we can extend children exposure to frame 50. Go to transform tool. Now have its own like that. Sorry, let's grab this. Go to frame 50. Rotate it. Obviously, as you can see, it hasn't been set up very well by me. But this is what you do. You go, you spend your time perfecting this. This is like a really long job in reality. And as you can see, it all animates smoothly. And let's move it slightly to add a keyframe. Rotate this head like that. And as you can see, quite simply, you can create basic animations, and that is the power of rigging it up. And you can obviously create some really effective animations with minutes, but what you want to spend your time on is creating this character so it can be animated perfectly and flawlessly, and then animating will become just such an easy thing to do. Now obviously there are a limited amount of movements you can do which is why sometimes you have to draw out individual frames which I will cover soon. Um, I'll show you like a bit of my animation I did a while ago um, which I never finished because I'm silly like that. Um, and this was just an introduction to rigging up a character and I will cover lip syncing and stuff in a future tutorial that will be coming soon. So thank you for watching. Remember, I'm Dan Allen, for, and I am on that bouncy castle. Um, YouTube.com forward slash Dan on a bouncy castle. Um, subscribe, comment, suggest a tutorial, and I will be back soon with some more tutorials.